Welcome to our May 2024 third Thursday training. And yes, I did look at my calendar because just yesterday I was writing an email and I put in February. So I want to be sure I'm saying the right month. Yeah. Somehow it's the middle of May. Uh, today we're going to do a quick and somewhat deep dive into the changes in the Board of Pensions benefits. Um, we're going to look at uh, a brief slideshow with some pieces that the board has been sharing. We're going to take a look at what the Presbytery is proposing that we're voting on this Saturday during our Presbytery meeting, so you're familiar with that. And then a new resource that they just, um, the Board of Pensions just released which is a benefits decision calculator. So those are the three things I'm uh, hoping we get to in our hour. But before we do all that, cool, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, you walk with us each and every day into the times of bright joy through the places of Oh, valleys where the sun is blocked by the mountains looming around us and everything in between, up and down, high and low, far and near, you are with us. As we all are navigating the changes in what had seemed to be a bedrock part of, of being a Presbyterian minister, I pray that you will remind us that you hold us in the palm of your hand that uh, together we care for one another and we will walk this path together. Be with us in this time. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to uh, share my screen and start with the Board of Pensions information, uh, which will help us do kind of a basic summary of, of where things are. Uh, feel free to jump in with questions or write them down and hold on to them. Uh, I am going to do my best to anticipate as many questions as I can. We'll see how well I do. Um, so you, you have heard in one way or another by now that the benefits plan, which includes medical care, is changing and the way it is uh, offered to people serving our churches will be different as of January 1st, 2025. The Board of Pensions signaled that that would be coming um, over a year ago. Um, we just didn't have all the specifics until this spring. So we, Presbytery, um, as the Commission on Ministers and Congregations and staff, we've been working to try to both be as informed as we can be, but also help prepare the Presbytery for all the conversations that will happen as a result of the changes. Just as a reminder, currently, if you are an installed pastor, uh, which means the congregation voted to call you to a position, you are required to participate in what, through the end of this year, is called pastor's participation. And that's 29% um, for medical coverage for whatever the size of your family is, whether that's pastor only or pastor, uh, partner, children, whatever the size, 29% for medical coverage, 10% for pension, death, and disability. For total, of 39% on uh, our effective salary. Starting January 1st, 2025, that's going to change. The new plan is going to be called Congregational Pastors Package. And this is what will be required moving forward as of January 1st, 2025 for installed pastors and available for other congregational leaders, which includes commissioned ruling elders who are working 20 hours a week or more. So moving forward, 2025, we get a new name, 
congregational pastors package. And then we get a new, um, a new formation of what that is. You see on the slide, it includes the benefit plan, defined benefit pension plan, uh, death and disability, temporary disability, and the medical plan, which we currently have, but only for the pastoral leader. It does not include coverage for spouse or partner or children, only the pastoral leader. And there with the eligibility, like I said, this is the plan that will be required for installed pastors um, and available to teaching elders or commission ruling elders who are serving a congregation. It is not available to people uh, like, like myself serving at the presbytery level or people serving in another Presbyterian organization that's not a church. It is only available for congregational pastors. So that's, that's the first change. We'll go more in depth in a few minutes. The second shift is what has been called minister's choice, which has been 10% of effective salary for pension, death, and disability. Now um, is also getting a new name as the covenant package. It remains at 10% of effective salary. But here's, here's the really important thing to pay attention to. Um, it, it is available to any employee working in a Presbyterian organization 20 hours a week or more. So that could be a church administrator. That could be a music director if they're working 20 hours a week or more. If you have a preschool that's connected to the congregation, that include could include preschool employees. 10% of their effective salary uh, would buy them into the pension plan as well as our death and disability benefits and give them access to other educational programs and other assistance plans. So that is a broadening of who can participate uh, in those benefits in our church. For, for three years, because this is such a significant change, uh, the board is offering transitional pastor's participation. This is for people who are currently enrolled in that pastor's participation. So if you're installed right now, you're in pastor's participation. Um, Tracy and I at Presbytery staff, we're in pastor's participation. It gives us a little bit of transition time. So it's an option for uh, three years, as you see at the bottom of the slide, it sunsets in 2027. And it continues in the model we're most familiar with, which is a larger dues percentage of effective salary that covers the entire family, not just the pastoral leader. So it's a limited eligibility. It is available for installed pastors, uh, but the the primary plan moving forward is that congregational pastors package. So those are the three plan changes. Um, for those of us who will not be eligible for the congregational pastors package, uh, the Board of Pensions offers uh, essentially an a la carte uh, possibility that instead of being um, dues based, it's not a percentage dues based on salary, it is more like a marketplace. If you are curious about that, I can talk to you about it, but today we're going to focus on congregational pastors package, transitional pastors participation, and that, that covenant package. So I'm going to move through these and take us to our next slide. So we can start looking at the numbers. So again, currently the medical portion of the dues for our current pastor's participation is 29%. As of January 1st, 2025, that will drop to 16% for the member only. 
So that coverage will be member only, but at a 13% difference. There are minimum dues and maximum dues, and then you see those numbers. Um, minimum dues of 6,000, maximum dues of 17,000. Um, so if, if you are part-time and below minimum compensation, you would probably be at the minimum dues of 6,000. And if, if you're very, very well paid, you might hit the maximum dues, but there's a buffer. There's a buffer there. Um, like I said, this is what is required moving forward for any installed pastors and available for any congregational pastoral leadership. Along with that, I don't know. So here's here's where the family comes in. So the the percentage of a of sixteen percent on effective salary covers the pastoral leader. Then other family members are covered by a lump sum, and you see those numbers. Children, whether it's one or whatever the top number might be, as a whole the lump sum to cover children of the, the pastoral leader, 8,950. The lump sum just for spouse or partner, 11,000. And the lump sum for spouse or partner and children for family, so the whole unit, is 20,600. Um, and we'll look at some numbers based on our um, minimum effective salary, uh, in, in just a few minutes. But those numbers are part of what you can be figuring into your own calculations if you are somebody who has spouse and or children who, who need health care uh, through the Board of Pensions. One of the new features in this is that while the congregation is required to pay the entirety of that 16% for the pastoral leader's medical, there is cost sharing opportunities in the board's plan for the medical for children, spouse, and family. We'll touch on that also in a minute. So, what this looks like is this. This is the combined dues slide. <clears throat> so you have the coverage level, um, member only, 16%, with a combined minimum dues and combined maximum dues. Uh, co coverage level, member plus children, is that 16% plus 8,950, and combined maximum and minimum there. And you see it for spouse, and for family, the other piece that's required is the income protection piece. And that's the piece that they're renaming covenant program. So the member only 16% and the income protection 10%, those are the required pieces for installed pastors, which is a total of 26%, as opposed to the current total of 39%. All right, so that's that's the major program that will be moving forward starting January 1st, 2025. <clears throat> now to take advantage of the transitional pastors participation, which is can be confusing. This is not for transitional pastors. It's not for interim pastors. It is the pastor's participation, which is what we have right now, the transition from pastor's participation to the congregational pastor's program. That's what the transition is pointing to in this title. And it, it, the other thing that this shows us is where we would be headed if the Board of Pensions had not made the the change that they've made <clears throat> it is a, it is a full change there's no there's no discussion it's not going back so the transitional pastor's participation for people who are currently in pastor's participation and need to transition to a different program 
in 2025, the medical dues will be 33%, as opposed to the current 29% this year. So you see that 4% increase in the medical dues while the income protection stays at 10%. Part of what the board has been saying is in order to respond to the continuously rising cost of health care, they would either have to increase these medical dues percentages in the program that we're most familiar with, pastor's participation, or they would have to do something substantially different. This is showing us both of those things. Uh, transitional pastor's participation with the increase in 4% uh, shows us what that would have looked like if the board had said, we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep on the way we've been keeping on. And the congregational pastors program, 16% for member only, flat rates for children, spouse, partner, or family. They show us the, the other option that the board has chosen. And you see here, a forecast, these numbers for 2026 and 2027 are not set in stone, they're forecast. But you see a forecast of, of medical expenses continuing to rise at a rate of about 4% a year. So the board is, is showing that um, this is where it was headed if they didn't do something really different. Uh, and so here is, here is the side-by-side, -side, which they have have named Congregational Dues Decision for 2025. Congregational Pastors Participation, CPP. The total dues is the 16% plus 10%, so 16% for uh, the Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield PPO, same medical care we have now, plus the 10% for pension, death, and disability, the income protection. Plus, if there are additional family members who will be covered versus the transitional pastor's participation with the dues straight up set at 43%, which is both medical and income protection. You with me so far? <laughs> okay. It's a lot. So what does this do? I'm gonna stop share for a minute. Uh, this means that every church that's providing some kind of medical coverage through the Board of Pensions for installed or uninstalled pastoral leaders has a change coming. You may remember that the Presbytery has both the responsibility and the right to set compensation standards. And so the Commission on Ministers and Congregations um, has been watching this unfold for a year, waiting until we knew what the details were, and then working to propose a way forward. And so that's the next thing I'm going to share. This is coming to the Presbytery um, Saturday. Uh, for the Presbytery to amend. It's coming from COMC as a motion to amend, to adopt, to say no to. <laughs> what we're proposing is instead of trying to say everyone has to do the same thing, which defeats in part the purpose of, of these changes. Part of what the Board of Pensions is trying to do is say, we are not a one-size-all-fits church. We haven't been for a really long time. Let's not have a one-size-fits-all benefits plan anymore. Let's create options. It becomes more complicated on the ground, but it does open new possibilities. So we didn't want to just say everyone has to do the same thing. That didn't feel, um, that didn't feel helpful. We also didn't want to say Everyone has to figure it out on their own. That also doesn't feel helpful. And that goes against our 
our understanding of how we are called to walk with and support one another. So instead, we are proposing three principles to help us move into 2025, which we're seeing as, as a transition year um, for, for all of us, for our pastors and their families, for our congregations. Uh, we're gonna walk into something different. We're gonna do it together. And then we're going to see, yeah, we're gonna evaluate, see where we are and make new decisions for 2026. So these are the values that we're proposing that the Presbytery will have an opportunity to engage Saturday. First, full medical coverage for pastoral leaders and their families, for everyone, but since we're especially setting compensation standards for our pastoral leaders, specifically in this instance, for pastoral leaders and their families is a value we will uphold. What this means in practice is that we are asking the presbytery by action on Saturday to commit to nobody losing health care simply because of the change in the Board of Pensions program. So if, if a pastor and spouse or partner and family have been covered, have relied on coverage, and they need to continue with full family coverage in 2025, we're committed to that. It may mean, and this is principle three, so I'm giving you a little sneak peek, it may mean the Presbytery coming alongside and helping to make that happen. But first and foremost, nobody loses coverage simply because of this. And nobody, uh, uh, an adjacent principle is that nobody has to move to substandard coverage just because of this change. So we don't want anyone starting 2025, either without medical coverage, who, who currently has it, or with a medical coverage that could be financially ruinous, like a high deductible, high copay coverage, which is, which is available. In fact, the board has that kind of coverage in their menu of options, but that can really, that can be really financially dangerous. So that's our first principle. One way or the other, everyone has medical care in 2025 who is currently covered in what we know as pastor's participation. That will be applied differently for every family. And so that's where the flexibility comes in. That's where the flexibility comes in. Our second principle <clears throat> um, is, is looking to protect uh, especially our pastors who don't need family coverage, our pastors who may be single or who whose spouses or children have other coverage, they have been helping to subsidize uh, the medical care for pastoral leaders in the Presbyterian Church for a long time. So instead of um, looking at an opportunity to simply save money, our second principle is, or at least the one we're proposing to the Presbytery, is that the terms of call will not be reduced from 2024 levels simply because of this change. So first principle, no one loses healthcare coverage. We're committed to healthcare coverage for our pastoral leaders and their family. Second principle, we're also committed to, to keeping the terms of call uh, at, at the current level, at the minimum. How does that play out in real life? And you see the, I, the italicized sentence. So as we start budgeting for 2025, a starting place should be the complete bottom line number from the 2024 terms of call. And so just be clear with language, here we are. We have we have our own specialized language, don't we? All of these all of these words and whoo labels. Effective salary 
is the combination of cash salary and housing allowance, right? And so that's that's what the dues are based on in the Board of Pensions programs, the cash salary, housing allowance, or the, the value of a manse. That's effective salary. But terms of call are the whole thing. That includes, that includes currently the 39%. That's part of the full terms of call. So when we say 2024 terms of call should be considered as the starting place, that's effective salary, uh, cash salary, housing allowance or manse, and that 39% pastor's participation for the board of pensions dues. That's where we start, which means if, if a pastor doesn't need coverage, they have that difference between the current 39%, which is, again, 29% medical, 10% income protection, the difference between that and what will be 26% in 2025. Ooh, a lot of numbers, a lot of numbers. It's a 13% difference based on the effective salary. Again, the cash salary and housing allowance. That means a pastor who doesn't need to add in children, spouse, family medical coverage could play with that 13% and say, hey, I would love to have the church apply that and match my retirement savings plan, my 403B. So instead of reducing the terms of call, the terms of call stay steady and the pastor is able to receive a continued benefit. Or the pastor could say, I'm at the low end of, of effective salary. My cash salary is, is low and inflation continues to be high. I'd like to work with uh, the church to move some of that into effective salary balancing out all of the equations that follow. A pastor could say, you know what? I might be up for sabbatical in two or three years. I would love to begin creating a sabbatical fund. And so with that 13% difference, I would like to begin putting that away in a particular fund that I could use for continuing education, for sabbatical, for professional expenses. So again, we're trying to preserve flexibility while also saying we're not going to simply assume a reduction in terms of call because of the reduction in the percentage dues. Does that make sense? And we'll look at some numbers again. And that third principle, we're here. We're here to help. Uh, this presbytery is financially blessed. We have the capacity to come alongside. So that will look like pastor or clerk of session or treasurer reaching out to myself, to Tracy, to their COMC liaison and saying, we need to have a conversation about 2025 terms of call and where we might need the Presbyterian's help. That's how we will make sure that our first principle is manageable. Because the other thing we don't want is for a church to say, we can't afford it and therefore we shouldn't have a pastor anymore. That's not the answer. We can come alongside, we can help bridge this gap. So numbers. Oh my gosh, you all know where your calculator is on your smartphones, right? I've been burning mine up, let me tell you. And if there, there are mistakes, they're all mine because these are all my calculations. Blah. So COMC is also proposing, um, because inflation continues at a little over 3%, COMC is also proposing a 3% increase in our minimum effective salary for 2025. Um, and so you see that here in these first two columns. Our current minimum, 62,708. 
current 29% is 18,185 based on that minimum number. In, in, two, in 2025, as of January 1st, 2025, that's 16% based on our 2024 minimum, creates a difference of just over $8,150. Again, if, if it's pastor only needing coverage, we're saying this difference can be in conversation applied to other parts of a pastor's terms of call. Let's look at the proposed 2025 numbers. I'm a believer in rounding things up. So if you multiply 62,708 by 3%, it does not ex exactly equal 64,600. But I believe in rounding numbers. That's what we're taught, right? Round to the nearest whatever. So 64,6 is easier to say and remember. <laughs> so if the Presbytery adopts that proposal, minimum compensation minimum effective salary for 2025 will be 64,600. If we were still using the, the current pastor's participation, which we're not, it's going away, but for argument's sake, that current 29% would be just a little bit more, you know, less than $600 more. Um, the 16%, you see that number would be 10,336. So the difference, looking at 2025, is just a little bit more. Don't make me do the math. So that's just to have that information. This document is on the Presbytery Meeting website. So under gatherings, assemblies, this document is there. So you can, you can crunch the numbers too. So then we look at the family coverage options, again, pastor covered at 16%, children, base number of 8,950. And this is where I was trying to show where the difference is. All right. So if our principle is starting with our 2024 numbers. That 2024 current 29% for full family medical is 18,185. If you take the 10,033 for the 16% plus the 8,950, there you go, that's $18,988. Look at me. So that's, that's a $552 increase. A church may look at that and say, we can easily provide the medical care 2025 for pastor and children. It is a small increase. And again, this is based on our minimum. It changes based on each pastor's effective salary. And so then you see the increase if it's just spouse being covered or the increase for full family coverage. Then we also want to take a look at the pastors, the transitional pastors participation. Um, so we could see that difference. So the full family coverage under transitional pastors participation, which is the 43%, which is 33% medical, um, would bring you out to 21,318 which is actually not as big of a jump as the full family coverage under the congregational pastor's participation. And I'm gonna shift now to an actual kind of a dues calculator so you can see this more clearly. Blah, all right. So this is what I'm about to shift to is a resource the board has just provided. I will put the link in the chat and I will read it out loud for our friends at home, our watching audience later. 
at least I will as soon as I can see it. So the link is www.pensions.org slash decision hyphen guide slash. You don't need the last slash. Decision hyphen guide. So I'll put that in the chat for everybody. If you go to pensions.org and you type in decision guide, it should bring you to this page. And so this, this is an attempt to help pastors, treasurers, all of us click through and see what the options. So answer these costs to see eligible questions to see eligibility and costs for 2025. Employer is a PCUS or a organization. So are you a pastoral leader for a church? Yes. All right. Now, if you pick no, it's going to ask a similar question. We're going to say yes, because this is for your benefit. So what's the employment status? We're especially focusing on our currently employed folks. And let's start by saying yes, they're installed. So those are the first three questions. Are you a pastoral leader in a congregation? Are you currently employed? Will start in 2024, will start in 2025. Installed or will be. And are you currently enrolled in pastor's participation or will you be by the end of 2024? Yes. So for our purposes, these are pastors currently serving within this presbytery who are currently installed and therefore uh, have to be in pastor's participation. 2025 effective salary, I'm going to use that proposed number, 64,600. Presbytery may not approve that, and that's okay, but we're going to use it for our, our math here. And then you can see the eligible packages. Whoo, lots of information all at once. All right. So here you see that congregational pastor's package. Pension, death, disability. This is this piece right here is the 10% of effective salary, these top three numbers. This 10,336 is the 16% for member only coverage. So you see immediately what that would be for member only in the congregational pastor's package versus the transitional pastor's package. We're here, it's the same numbers here for pension, death, and disability. Same numbers, because it continues at 10%. Here is where the big change is. That medical is going up to 33% in the transitional pastor's participation. So you see the difference, 16% here for pastoral leader only, 33% here for pastoral leader and the whole family. So right there, you can see, see that. And then on under the congregational pastor's package, that's when you look at who else in the family needs coverage. Do children need coverage? For 2025, we are just shy of proposing that congregations are required to pay 100%. That's part of the presbytery coming alongside. If a pastor and a session want to negotiate something different and the pastor feels good about it, all right. But this is where, this is part of the presbytery coming alongside. So children, 100%. And so you see, you see it added up. The employer net cost, 25,746 here in congregational pastor's participation with the pastoral leader and children. And you see that that is less than the transitional pastor's participation, 25,746 versus 27,778. Okay, well, what if it's spouse? Well, now you see if it's spouse, 27,796, 27,778. So if a pastor 
and spouse need coverage, the transitional pastor's participation saves you a whopping uh, $18. Yes? Someone else can check my math. I think that's right. That's not a big savings, but still, it's a savings. Well, what if the whole family needs coverage? And there again, you see the difference. If the whole family needs coverage into 2025, it will make better sense for a congregation and session and pastor to go with that transitional pastor's participation in 2025. You see that difference in number, 27778 versus 37, almost a $10,000 difference, $9,500 difference, give or take. So you're like, okay, that was funnish. I'm gonna reset <laughs> I'm gonna try again. Uh, we'll still say currently employed, but not installed, right? Let's look at not installed. Oh, so now we have a new question. So here's something to remember. If you're installed, if you are installed as the pastoral leader, it doesn't matter how many hours you work. Installed is installed, full stop. If you are not installed 20 hours a week or more. So let's say no and see what happens. Nope, not installed, not 20 hours a week. Uh, Effective salary. I'm just going to put in 30,000 because I'm not going to see what a percentage of 64.6 might be. Not eligible. Not eligible for congregational pastors package or transitional pastors participation or that covenant package, which again is 10% for pension, death, and disability. Whoo. Can we get them to 20 hours? Let's see if we can get them to 20 hours. Okay. Yes. 20 hours. Well, what if they're not enrolled in pastor's participation? What if we have a congregation that says, you know what, in 2025, we're going to get our pastoral leader who's not installed up to 20 hours a week, but that'll be new, new coverage as of January 1st, 2025. So let's say we'll not be enrolled in pastor's participation. Uh, we'll do 33,000 here, uh, slightly more than half, whatever. Okay. So in this case, someone who is not currently in, in pastor's participation, the current dues program, would not be eligible for that transitional pastor's participation in 2025. What they'd be eligible for, 20 hours a week or more, if not installed, would be that congregational pastor's package. And again, we see the dues breakdown. And here we see that minimum for medical. So 16% here, I'll do that real fast. What did I say, 33,000? So 33,000 times 16% is, oh, is 5,280 dollars, which is less than the minimum participation. So that gets bumped up to a minimum participation. What used to happen, and I know because I was a part-time pastor for eight and a half years, what used to happen is the church I was serving was charged the medical portion of the dues based on the full-time equivalent of my salary. So even though I was only working 20 hours a week, they're right, they're like, you may only be working 20 hours a week, but you need healthcare full-time. You know, you don't need part-time healthcare. <laughs> you need, you need full-time healthcare. And so the dues were based on a full-time equivalent. That's not happening. It's based on the actual effective salary. These numbers stay the same. So these flat rate numbers for children, spouse or partner and family stay the same regardless of whether you're full-time, part-time, regardless of where you are in the minimum or maximum. So you see what that looks like here and you see the covenant package by itself, 3,300, which is this. That equals this number, 3,300, you see that. Okay, so this calculator 
is available to all of us now um, at, at that link, decision-guide, um, to take a look at what the different possibilities may be. Anything that gets more complicated, that's when we call our Board of Pensions rep, or we call 1-800-PRES-PLAN is the, um, oh, I can't, that's not helpful. I, I don't have the letters on my keypad here. What? Prez plan. What is that? That is seven, seven, three. Oh, it's making me spell and six. Or you can go to the Board of Pensions website and get the number directly from there so you know it's not mistyped or miscalculated. Bottom line. And then let's let's check in on questions. Presbytery is here to walk with you. We do not want a pastor or a session to feel like they're trying to figure this out on their own. We are here to walk with you in this conversation. If there is any concern, please, please invite us in. Please invite us to be part of the conversation. We're expecting most of our churches are going to start doing these kinds of budget things over the summer. That's usually when it happens. Reach out to us, please do. We want to uh, provide that on-ramp into 2025 so no one goes without who currently is covered. And we want to be sure that the pastors who don't need coverage for spouse, partner, or children they don't artificially lose ground in their terms of call. We want our terms of call to stay stable. Okay, that's a lot. I just threw a lot at you. I'll put one more website in the um, chat. Stop. This is where... This is where um, the Board of Pensions has been posting a lot of information. It's seasonofrebuilding.pensions.org. And the good news is if you go to pensions.org, which is our Board of Pensions, I don't know how we managed to score out of all the pension plans in the world, we have pensions.org. Woo! We're number one. Um, if you go to pensions.org, one of the banners on the homepage is all about the season of rebuilding, which they're calling this. So you can go straight to that website and, and when all the numbers start dancing in your head, not like sugar plums, but like other things, um, you can, you can go there and refresh your memory. This will be posted on, on the Presbyterian's YouTube channel and the, the resources, um, including that document that we're bringing to the Presbytery for consideration are on our webpage as well. Questions, anything you're like, wait a minute, I think I got lost. So thank you, Cindy, for explaining all of that. That, that was helpful and, and, and that was, a lot I know <laughs> um so it seems like I mean I um as some a pastor who's single with no children it seemed like I could really potentially come out significantly yeah better financially per, as opposed to my colleagues who have spouses and children um just the way that works out Am I, if, if I'm understanding this correctly. Yeah, especially if, um, I mean, it will create, it does create a scenario where a single pastor or a pastor whose spouse or partner has their own health insurance um, is, a, is a less expensive option than a pastor with a family. That's another reason um, to keep our our terms of call whole and not not begin reducing them, because 
pastors don't stay forever. <laughs> Church members don't stay forever. They're either. Eh. But, but pastors come and go. And so uh, for a pastor who's currently single, for a church to reduce and feel like, hey, you know, we're saving money now, then when that pastor does go, what happens? When they call a pastor mm -hmm. with additional uh, coverage needs for family, that becomes a bigger jump. So that, is, that mm -hmm. is another reason why we're saying, let's keep our terms of call robust and whole. At least one presbytery is, is proposing um, shifting from effective salary uh, as a minimum compensation to terms of call. So saying instead of for us, 64.6 is our proposed effective salary for minimum effective salary for 2025, they're saying, okay, that plus the equivalent probably of pastor's participation um, as a starting point, that's their minimum. So it's the full terms of call and then saying pastors, divvy it up how work, how it works best for you. Um, we wanted to start with principles as as our first as our first step. Yeah. Other questions. Yeah. So so for all of our pastoral leaders, something will be shifting, whether it's pastoral leaders who only require coverage for themselves there'll be that opportunity to negotiate how that 13% difference is applied. For our pastoral leaders who do have coverage needs for family, then it's the opportunity of, of researching the differences between congregational pastors package, the new program with the flat rates versus transitional pastors participation with the 43% dues for full family coverage. Um, everyone's going to see a change. I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath. <laughs> You're not alone. We are here. Uh, representatives from the Board of Pensions are, are ready to at, answer questions. Um, and we will walk through this together. That's, even though it's the third principle on the list, it is the underlying principle for everything uh, in this Presbytery. So. Any other questions? <laughs> Stunned into, yeah, I get it. I've, I've sat through the, the presentation three times now. Um, and I feel like I kind of, I feel like I have a handle on it, but I've sat through it three times. Um, you're in my prayers. Any individual questions, feel free to shoot me an email, or like I said, give Carrie a call or uh, that Prez plan. Um, yeah, and then stay tuned. We'll see what the Presbytery does on Saturday. And after that, we'll start pushing out um, additional information and guidelines. So, so everyone has something to hold on to moving forward. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you for walking us through all that. No problem. And, and I'll do it for sessions as well. So I can do a shorter version for a session, but if that would be helpful, you know where to find me. Okay. Take Thank care, you. everybody.